We are still looking at integration techniques. We're looking at substitution. And this is the third video on substitution. In the next two videos, we're going to look at some specific types of functions. And those are integrals that result in inverse trigonometric functions. So just a reminder for the derivatives of inverse trigonometric functions, there are three that you need to be familiar with. So just make sure that you do remember them and you have encountered inverse trigonometric functions before. I just want to mention there's one obvious one that's not there. And that's the derivative of inverse cos of x. But that one is just negative the derivative of inverse sine of x. So when we look at integrating, we're only going to look at sine because they simply differ by a constant, so we don't have to consider both sine and cosine. So if we look at this first integral, the integral of 1 over the root of 1 minus x squared, that will then give me inverse sine of x plus a constant c. Or you can think of it as given minus inverse cos of x, so sine inverse of x and minus cos of inverse of x differ by a constant. So I don't need both of them. So when I see an integral of this form, I'm going to think of arc sine. Next one, that one will give me an arc tan of x plus a constant, and the third one, arc sec of x plus a constant. Now, as you know, these integration techniques, we're looking at functions that get a little bit more complicated. But as standard, these are the types that we're looking forward to in these examples. So let's look at this first example. The integral of 1 over the root of 4 minus x squared. Now we know that the integral of 1 over the root of 1 minus x squared dx gives me arc sine of x plus a constant. But that's not what I have here. I don't have a 1. I've got a 4. So what do we do with this 4 to make it look like a 1? How do we turn a 4 into a 1? How do I make this function look like what I already know? And we're going to use substitution, but we have to use a little bit of, do a little bit of work beforehand. So what we're going to do is we're going to see that's the integral of 1 over. Now I want a 1 over there, so I'm going to take 4 out as a common factor. And I've got 1 minus x squared over 4, the root of that dx. And we know that that's the integral of 1 over that root of 4 times the times the bracket. We can take it out as two roots, so the square root of 4 is 2 times the square root of 1 minus x. Now, x squared over 4, I can write as x over 2 squared. Now it's looking more like what I have on the right-hand side over here. So I can write that as a half, the constant can come out, the integral of 1 over the root of 1 minus x over 2 squared dx. So it's looking more like what I have on the right hand side, but not exactly. And here the substitution part comes in. So I will say let u be equal to x over 2. du is then a half dx. So I've got a dx there, I actually have the half there too. But 2 du will then be dx. So when I make my substitution, that gives me a half times the 2 times the integral of 1 over the root of 1 minus u squared du. And now it looks like what I've got on the right hand side. So a half times 2 gives me 1. So that's the integral of 1. Of, apologies, we're integrating now. So that is half times 2 gives me 1. And I've got arc sine or sine inverse of u plus the constant c, and that is arc sine of x over 2 plus c. So we had to do a bit of manipulation first, but after that we use substitution to get an inverse trigonometric function. But it's still a type of substitution. So let's look at the next example, the integral of 1 over 16 plus x squared. Now, again, we're going to need a substitution. We're going to need to manipulate this a bit. But let's first see. This looks very familiar. It looks similar to 1 over 1 plus x squared dx, which is arctan, or tan inverse of x. So it looks similar to that. That's not exactly what I have. But we're going to use the same technique as we did in the previous one to make it look, look a little bit more like what we've got. I'm going to take 16 out as a common factor, and I've got 1 plus x squared over 16 dx. So the 1 over 16 we can take out of the bracket. 
times the integral of 1 over 1 plus x over 4 squared. That's the same as x squared over 16. Now it's got a similar format to what I have here on the right-hand side. So I'm going to do my substitution now and say let q be equal to x over 4. du is then a quarter dx. I've got a dx there, so dx is 4 du. So what we have is 1 over 16 times the 4 times the integral of 1 over 1 plus u squared du. And now we've got what we want, so that's 4 over 16, which is 1 over 4, arctan of u plus c, and then we take it back to the x's, so it's arctan of x over 4 plus c. All right, so you can already make a link between the original question and the answer, first identifying that it's it will result in an arctan and seeing where the numbers come from. But rather than memorize, look at some example, oh, rather than memorize, take out the common factor and do a quick substitution and you can get there quite easily.